Cholera is an acute diarrheal disease caused by Vibrio cholerae, O group 1 or O group 139. The infection ranges from symptomless to severe infection and the majority of cases are either asymptomatic or just mild infections. But a typical case is characterized by sudden onset of profuse, effortless and watery diarrhea followed by vomiting and dehydration, muscular cramps and suppression of urine. The case fatality can be very high if no treatment is given, if the fluid and electrolytes are not replaced and it ranges from 30 to 40 percent in untreated cases. The problem statement in world. Number of cholera cases have been rising in the recent years even while the cases are supposedly underreported because of inadequate surveillance systems or underreporting because of fear of trade and travel sanctions. Outbreak in the world are caused by O group 1 and O139. Majority are by O group 1. O139 is limited to Southeast Asia. New LTOR variants are detected in Asia and Africa, which can cause more severe cholera with higher case fatality rates. LTOR variants have been traditionally associated with milder cases and with much lower case fatality rates. But recently, a higher virulence LTOR variants have been identified in Asia and Africa. Hence, careful monitoring of the strain which has caused the outbreak is recommended. It is very important to know which strain has caused the present outbreak. Global warming has been reported to be favorable for Vibrio cholerae spread. The typical areas include peri-urban slums, disaster resulting in disruption of water and sanitation system, population displacement in overcrowded camps, Epidemics never arise from dead bodies. It remains, that is the incidence of cholera remains a key indicator of the social development or its lack. New challenges for cholera are, for control of cholera are, emergence of new and more virulent strains, antimicrobial resistance and climate change. Indian scenario of cholera. L. Tor biotype got introduced into India in 1964 and since then it has replaced the classical strain prevalent in India before that. Prior to this, classical strain was widely prevalent and with the introduction of L. Tor, West Bengal, which used to be the home of cholera, lost this uh, tag and in the new areas where cholera was introduced, it was present more as smoldering infection rather than outbreaks or epidemics with high case fatality rates. Smoldering infections, that is mild infections with low fatality. Explosive outbreaks which used to occur following large fairs became rare and there has been no large scale epidemic of classical cholera since 1964 for reasons not known. L-TOR biotype has replaced classical biotype all over the country and most of the L-TOR biotype are Ogawa serotype in the country. Cases are reported from Gujarat, Maharashtra, Karnataka, Tamil Nadu and West Bengal. Cholera can occur both as an epidemic, that is an, as an outbreak, or endemic, that is smoldering infection, depending upon the agent and environment factors. The agent characteristics are ability to survive in a given environment, virulence of the strain, and the average number of organisms, that is the dose required to cause infection. The environmental characteristics which determine whether it will be epidemic or endemic, the number of susceptibles, 
opportunities for transmission of the vibrio like unsafe drinking water overcrowding etc so it is said that introduction of cholera into any community is easy and cannot be prevented but whether it turns into a public health problem or not depends if the sanitation is satisfactory or not an epidemic of cholera is typically abrupt in onset which spreads fast and cause deaths it reaches a peak and then subsides gradually as the force of infection declines it is ultimately self limiting because cholera confers temporary immunity and a large number of subclinical infections now start occurring the force of infection has two components that is through infected water and through contact person to person contact hence elimination of the contaminated water source does not immediately cause epidemic to end but a tail is produced due to continuation of person to person transmission endemicity of cholera when an area is endemic for cholera the endemicity is not stable that is it occurs in it shows seasonal fluctuations there may be occasional outbreaks the seasonal variation also differs from region to region and country to country and within the same region it changes with time for example previously cholera outbreaks were common in summers in kolkata and during winters in bangladesh but now at both the places it occurs more commonly in autumn el tor strain has a greater endemic tendency rather than to cause outbreaks unlike the classical strains that is this is because of higher infection to case ratio that is more of asymptomatic or mild cases as compared to number of classic cholera cases there has been speculation about the what happens to vibrio cholerae during interepidemic periods because in endemic areas also cholera occurs at intervals and humans are the only known reservoir so how does the bacteria survive in between the outbreaks three explanations have been proposed there may be existence of long term carriers which maintain the reservoir or there may be a diminished but continuous transmission may be occurring by asymptomatic cases it has also been proposed that the bacteria exists in a free living form in the environment and may transform later on some people have even speculated that non o group 1 vibrio cholerae which are highly prevalent in surface waters can they transform into o group 1 and which can then cause cholera outbreaks epidemiology of any disease is discussed in terms of agent host and environment factors which affect the occurrence of the disease so we will discuss agent host and environment factors first the agent that is vibrio cholerae vibrio cholerae o group 1 or o group 139 cause cholera vibrio cholerae which do not agglutinate with o1 or o139 were previously known as non agglutinating vibrios can cause cholera like diarrhea but then this case will not be caused as cholera because it is not caused by o group 1 or 139 hence it is necessary to identify vibrio cholerae o1 or o139 for specific diagnosis of cholera vibrio cholerae o1 has two biotypes classical and eltor both of which have three serological types ogawa inaba and hikojima most strains isolated serological types are isolated are eltor ogawa serotype in our country this is in short we have discussed vibrio cholerae o1139 classical and eltor each of which have ogawa inaba and hikojima serotypes resistance of the agent it is killed in half an hour by heating at 56 degree celsius boiling kills it within a few seconds 
it can survive in ice for as long as 4 to 6 weeks maybe even longer it is easily destroyed by the disinfectants like crisol and bleaching powder L-TOR biotype is in general more resistant than the classical biotype of Vibrio cholerae. Vibrio cholerae produces toxin. It multiplies inside the lumen of the small intestine and produces an exotoxin. This exotoxin is an enterotoxin that is toxic to the intestine. The toxin activates adenylcyclase which activates cyclic AMP system of mucosal cells of the small intestine and the exotoxin has no effect on any other tissue apart from the epithelium of the gut. Reservoir of infection, human being is the only known reservoir which can be a case or a carrier. Cases range from inapparent infection to severe disease. 75% of infections may be asymptomatic but they shed bacteria for 7 to 14 days after infection. Only 5% of the infections develop severe diarrhea, vomiting and dehydration. People with low immunity are at a greater risk of death if they are infected and it is the mild and asymptomatic cases which play a significant role in maintaining the endemic reservoir. Carriers mostly are temporary though rarely one may become chronic carrier. Carrier excrete much fewer vibrios. Hence, a carrier can only be detected by the bacteriological examination of a purge stool. Purge stool is induced by, in, by giving 30 to 60 gram of magnesium sulfate in dissolved in 100 ml of water orally and the stool that follows is called as the purge stool. The source of infection is the stool and vomit of the cases or carriers. Infective dose. Cholera is dose related. So only if the ingested dose is more than the infective dose for that individual will the individual get infected and diseased. A normal person's infective dose is 10 to the power 11 organisms for producing clinical illness. Period of communicability for a case is 7 to 10 days, for convalescent carriers 2 to 3 weeks and for chronic carrier it can range from 1 month to 10 years. Carriers in cholera, you can get a short note on it. Carriers is defined as an apparently healthy person who is excreting Vibrio cholerae O1 in stools. Four types of carriers have been described in cholera. Preclinical or incubatory carriers. These are carriers for short duration. Convalescent carrier. Contact or healthy carrier. And chronic carrier. Preclinical or incubatory carriers. They shed the bacteria while they are in, in, in within incubation period after they become diseased they are case and no longer a carrier convalescent carrier they have recovered from cholera but some of they them may shed vibrio cholerae for two to three weeks this state occurs among those patients who have not received effective antibiotic treatment some of them can become chronic carriers contact or healthy carriers. These are those individuals who acquire infection from a case or a carrier but this infection remains subclinical. Their duration is usually less than 10 days after that they stop shedding because the gallbladder is not infected. They play an important role in the spread of cholera during outbreaks. A chronic carrier occurs infrequently and the longest carrier state has been found to be over 10 years. In this case, the gallbladder gets infected and maintains the infection. They excrete fewer vibrios and 
Hence, selective media and proper enrichment are important for their diagnosis. The antibody teeter against Vibrio cholerae O1 rises and remains positive in such carriers as long as they harbor the infection. This method is preferable along with bacteriological examination of stools. For Host factors. All ages and both sexes are equally susceptible to cholera. Gastric acidity is an effective barrier. Vibrio is destroyed at a pH 5 or lesser and hence conditions which reduce gastric acidity may increase the susceptibility to cholera. Population mobility that is people participation in pilgrimages, fairs, marriages increases the risk of contracting cholera. Economic status, the incidence is highest in the lower socioeconomic strata. Immunity, an attack of cholera confers some immunity but the duration is not known. And vaccination also gives temporary immunity and that to partial for 3 to 6 Environmental factors which facilitate spread of cholera are poor environmental sanitation contaminated water and food consumption. Flies may carry vibrios, but their role has not been proven. Low standards of personal hygiene, illiteracy, poor quality of life, habit of open defecation have been associated with increased risk of cholera. How is cholera transmitted? Transmitted through fecal contamination of water, for example, water in lakes and ponds, rivers, etc., if contaminated and used for drinking directly. Contaminated foods and drinks. Fruit and vegetables washed with contaminated water. Cooked food may get contaminated through the contaminated fingers and flies. Through direct contact, that is, person to person, through contaminated fingers while handling contaminated linen and fomites, etc. What is the mechanism of diarrhea in cholera? That is, how is diarrhea caused in cholera? You can see there is a thick layer of mucus on the intestinal epithelium. The Vibrio cholerae secretes mucinase which dissolves mucus and then the Vibrio cholerae multiplies inside the lumen of small intestine and secretes enterotoxin which has a light subunit and a heavy subunit. The light subunit attaches itself to the epithelium and attaches the bacteria to the epithelium. The heavy subunit stimulates the adenyl cyclase CAMP system of the intestine which leads to secretion of copious amounts of fluid into the lumen of the small intestine. This fluid is isotonic with body fluids and is the cause for diarrhea and vomiting. Clinical features. We will describe a typical case of cholera which consists of three stages. These are stage of evacuation, stage of collapse, and stage of recovery. Stage of evacuation. Abrupt onset of profuse, painless, effortless, watery diarrhea. Followed by vomiting. The water, rice water appearance of stool is characteristic. Person may pass as many as 40 stools a day. There is so much of secretion of fluids into the lumen. Second stage is the stage of collapse. The collapse is because patient soon passes into collapse due to dehydration and acidosis. Clinical signs are sunken eyes, hollow cheeks, scaphoid abdomen, subnormal temperature, washerman's hand and feet because of rehydration again, absent pulse, 
unrecordable BP, loss of skin elasticity, shallow and quick respirations due to acidosis. The output of urine decreases and may eventually stop. Person may be restless, experience intense thirst and cramps in legs and abdomen. And death, if occurs, will occur at this stage due to severe dehydration and acidosis. Third stage is stage of recovery. If the person survives the stage of collapse, begins to recover. Blood pressure begins to rise. Temperature returns to normal. Urine secretion is re-established. In some cases, if it is not re-established, it means the patient has gone into anuria and renal failure has set in, needs to be managed in an emergency. The classical forms of all these stages, three stages, occurs in only 5-10% to of cases. Mild cases recover within 1-3 to days and with LTOR, 90% of infections are mild. The LTOR biotypes differs from classical biotype in the following. With LTOR, there is a higher incidence of mild and asymptomatic infections. There are fewer secondary infections, fewer secondary cases in the affected families. There is a tendency towards chronic carriers and physically more resistant than classing biotype that survive longer in the extra-intestinal environment. The diagnosis of cholera can never be made certainly based only on clinical grounds. There is a need to collect stool sample. A fresh specimen needs to be collected and that too before starting the antibiotics. The stool sample can be collected using a rubber catheter or a rectal swab. Rubber catheter should be sterilized by boiling before uh, introduction and the voided specimen through the catheter may be co collected directly into the transport medium. Alternatively, rectal swab can be used where the which has been autoclaved and the absorbent cotton has to be dipped into the holding medium before introduction into the rectum. If it has to be put directly into the transport medium, if transport medium is not available, the swab can be packed in sterile plastic bag and sealed tightly. Vomitus is practically never used because there are very few chances of isolating vibrios from vomitus. For examination of the suspected water. If filter method has to be used, we need 1 to 3 liters of suspected water which is collected in sterile bottles. Other method is to add 9 volumes of suspected water to one volume of 10% peptone water and sent to the lab. Suspected food sample needs to be collected. About 1 to 3 gram of the food sample are collected in transport media and sent to the lab. For transportation of the stool sample, sterile, sterilized McCartney bottles 30 ml capacity containing alkyne, alkaline peptone water or Wengertrumann medium are used. For rectal swab, alkaline peptone water or Kerry Blair medium can be used. For this, the top of the swab should be broken so that it fits into the tube containing uh, the medium and the cap can be replaced. If suitable plating media is available by the bedside, the stools can be directly streaked and forwarded to the lab along with the above samples. For identification of Fibrio cholerae from the specimen, dark field illumination microscopy can diagnose within 80% of cases within minutes. In the dark field, the Vibrios can be seen like shooting stars in a dark sky. If this mutility ceases on mixing with polyvalent anti-cholera serum, the organisms are presumed to be Vibrio cholerae. 
the samples can be cultured in the following way the specimen in the holding fluid is shook well and inoculated onto the peptone water telluride medium which is incubated for 5 to 6 hours and a loop from this is subcultured on bile salt agar medium which is incubated overnight and the plates are observed under oblique light illumination and further tests are carried out characterization of the isolated bacteria are done by gram staining observing motility in a hanging drop preparation serological test agglutination with polyvalent anticholera serum if positive for cholera agglutination is checked with the inaba and ogawa strains antisera biochemical test for uh, identification are sugar broths and cholera red test with peptone water further agglutination with o1 and o139 antisera and other characterization tests control of an outbreak of cholera in short we will list the steps some of which we will discuss in detail are uh, verification of diagnosis whether the reported cases are actually due to cholera by the identification methods we have discussed in previous slides if confirmed notification of occurrence of cholera to the appropriate authorities early case finding establishment of treatment centers rehydration therapy antibiotic treatment investigation of the epidemic what caused the outbreak sanitation measures and chemoprophylaxis if indicated for the verification of cholera we have to identify vibrio cholerae o1 or o139 in the stools of the patient if some of the patients test positive it is assumed that the remaining ones with similar signs and symptoms are also cholera and there is not necessary to culture the stools of all the patients that report if it is confirmed that the cases reported are actually cholera the notification has to be made to the local health authority and national government needs to notify who within 24 hours of its occurrence since 2005 this notification is not mandatory the number of cases and deaths per day and per week are to be reported till the epidemic is over once it is confirmed that there is an outbreak of cholera there should be a rapid case finding so as to prevent deaths in as many cases as possible and establish treatment centers nearby so that no time is lost in providing treatment they should be easily accessible treatment facilities the mildly dehydrated can be sent home and given ors the severely dehydrated patients have to be transferred to the nearest treatment center provided ors during the way and given iv as they once they reach the treatment center if there is no pre existing center nearby establish temporary centers in local buildings like schools because transportation of cases over long distances may spread the infection and may become make the outbreak bigger in remote areas with poor health infrastructure mobile teams should be established at the district level and dispatched as soon as there is any report of cholera outbreak the rapid search for cases are cases are now admitted and treated the treatment includes rehydration which can be oral in mild rehydration and intravenously if severe dehydration is there antibiotics are to be given orally after vomiting stops parenteral administration has shown no ad special advantage in cholera the commonly used antibiotics are fluoroquinolones tetracycline azithromycin ampicillin and trimethoprim sulfamethoxazole combination remember that antidiarrheal antiemetic and antispasmodics are not to be given also cardiotronics and corticosteroids are not to be given if no relief in diarrhea occurs after 2 days of antibiotic treatment we suspect antibiotic resistance
once the cases have been rapidly searched and the severe ones are treated we need to investigate the epidemic we get time to investigate the epidemic to define the extent of the outbreak to identify the modes of transmission which cause the outbreak and to identify which control measures are to be applied to control the present outbreak for assistance in this investigation can be asked from the following institutions in addition to the treatment early treatment and uh, investigation of the outbreak for further control of the outbreak we should take sanitation measures to provide safe water for all purposes drinking washing and cooking this can be done by chlorination of the water or boiling which the water is stored in narrow mouth covered containers but the ultimately aim is to provide piped water on permanent basis to all the communities excreta disposal provide cheap simple and effective sanitary latrines we can choose the most practical method and use the help of local population for constructing these safe latrines in addition health education has to be spread so that people properly use such facilities regarding hand washing after defecation and the dangers of open defecation etc especially near the water source food sanitation has to be ensured health education is to be given for consumption of cooked and hot food for cleaning the utensils after use cleaning and drying for disinfection health education has to be spread disinfection can be both concurrent and terminal and the most effective disinfectant is crisol bleaching powder is also an effective disinfectant if it is proven to be of good quality what is to be disinfected the stools of the patients vomiters clothes and the latrines which has been used by the case and the house and the neighborhood chemoprophylaxis has not been advised has not been found to be effective on mass basis chemoprophylaxis is advised only for the household contacts or if the cases have occurred in a closed community the drug of choice for chemoprophylaxis in cholera is tetracycline 500 mg bd for 3 days or a single dose of doxycycline vaccination is available against cholera these are oral vaccines two types one is ducoral whole cell vaccine which is monovalent it contains killed whole cells of only vibrio cholerae ovum both classic and eltor and both inaba and ogawa in addition it has b sub unit of cholera toxin it is available as a 3 ml vial with bicarbonate buffer given as effervescent effervescent granules this bicarbonate buffer is required to counter the gastric acidity so that the b sub unit of toxin is not affected by the gastric acidity two oral doses are given and if the risk continues a booster dose is given after 2 years not to be given to under 2 year old children the other vaccine are bivalent that is it contains both o group 1 and 139 there is no toxin sub unit so no buffer is required given in two doses 14 days apart and booster after 2 years